Okay, so now that I have my sketch into Photopea, I am going to lower my opacity so I can see what I'm doing um, above the background, which is my sketch. I'm going to lower it to maybe about 50% so I can still see my sketch, but I'm definitely going to be able to see my new line work going when I add my shapes as I digitize my design. Now I'm going to lock this because I don't want to touch it or accidentally draw on my background. So then I'm just going to click lock and you see the little lock icon there. You can still change this if you go back and unclick the lock, then you can go back and edit it if you want to change the opacity for some reason again. So I'm going to lock it. Then I'm going to go down here and you can see as if I just hover over any of the icons, it'll show me exactly what the icon does. So this is new layer. So that's what I want to make a new layer. And I'm going to build my shapes on top of this background and use my sketch as my guide. The tool that I would strongly recommend is right here. It's the pen tool. This tool is going to give you lovely, beautiful shapes and you can use your your touchpad to do it and um, you won't be um, it'll keep your lines really smooth and professional looking and that's what you really want in a logo I guess unless it's the style it depends on what style your logo is though so I can't say that generally for everybody but most part you're gonna want really nice clean lines right here you're gonna see that I want have shape selected and the pen tool is going to allow me to make a path, but it's going to be knot by knot. And the knots are the little dots that are going to be created as I go through this. Now, I don't want the fill color to be red. Um, it's, it's funny because down here it's set to my standard black default black and white, but up here the fill is red. So I don't want it to fill anything in for me right now. So I'm going to click the fill type to the X, which means none. And the stroke, I do want to be black right now. I'm just working in black and white, and I can change all my colors and update all that stuff later. So now I just really want to get the content, like the design down. I can change all the details later. So that the pen tool is one of the most, it's a wonderful, versatile tool to use. It's also a really challenging tool to use. So I'm going to show you a couple tricks. I'm just going to outline right here this big uh, kind of arrow shape. It's like a that's pointing towards the right here. So I'm going to start right here. I've got my pen tool selected and I'm not doing this with a fancy mouse or anything. I'm just using my touchpad on my laptop here. So I'm going to click. I've established one um, knot right there and then this is going to be a nice smooth line all the way to there. So I'm going to do it to right here. Now I'm not lifting up on my pad. If I lift up, it will let go and, and then I'll make, um, it will leave my line like this. And I don't want that. I still want to adjust this curve. So I'm going to do control Z to go back and I'm going to start this again. I have right here is my first point. And then here, my second one, and then I'm going to, while holding and not letting, letting go of my touchpad, I'm going to bring this out to kind of make that curve just like that. So it's right on my design the way I want it. Now I'm going to let go. Now, if I try to just go to my next point right here, it's going to take it from that last knot. I don't want that. So I'm going to go control Z. I'm going to hit alt and then I'm going to click that last knot where I want to restart my next line. And then it brings it back to that point. I let go of Alt. Then I'm going to bring my, my mouse down here. I'm going to go here, not letting go. Now this one was tricky because I cannot bring um, this curve down anymore because of my screen. So what I will do is I will do control minus so I can see what I'm doing a little better and then I can do what I want to do. See now I can bring that curve down and I want it about right there. Let go. Remember you're pressing alt holding it and now clicking back to that point I was just at that I want to keep going from. In this one I don't even have to adjust I'm just going to make it to right here. Okay, then I'm going to keep going and moving my next one right here. Now I'm holding this one because I don't, I want a little curve in that. So then I'm bringing this outward and you can kind of see how it lifts that line. And then I'm going to let go. And then I had to click alt, get myself back to that point. And then here's my last two. Not letting go. I'm still pressing down. Once you let go of that pad and it like unclicks, then it's going to make the, the line for you. 
let go. Now I'm going to click Alt and get myself back to that knot. And then I think I'm just going to bring this here. Now I have connected this all together. So my paths are all enclosed. It's a closed path, which means it's a shape. Okay, this is really important because if you want to fill it, it needs to be an enclosed shape. So I would really, really strongly recommend working with closed shapes. You can then fill it with whatever color you want. Now, I don't want to fill it at all, but I could do that later. Okay, and this is probably going to be something that's underneath, but I don't want anything filling right now. Okay, now I can hide my background and show you this is what I've got here. You could also as well make a new layer and then you could just paint bucket that layer with a white or just do a, a, a white shape. Um, if you want to, you can see the paint bucket tool is located underneath the gradient tool, just like it is in Photoshop, I believe. And then I'm going to switch these guys and then we will just paint bucket this white. And of course you can't see it because it's on top of this other layer. So I'm going to move that guy underneath. And now I can really like start to see what my design is looking like. And I might just want to hide that and then go back and, you know, go back and forth here. So this is really what you want to see. Closed shapes that you can then fill and manipulate. You can resize and do all those things. So after doing this main shape, I kind of did the biggest, most simple shape first. Now I'm going to go in and add my letters, okay, and do shape by shape. Now it's really hard to see my letters, so I'm going to do control plus to try to get up here. And you can even, um, you know, this way I can... Um, I can kind of move around and I can see what I want to do um, and adjust my screen, okay? Um, I'm going to stop right here for now and let you guys start working on your logo design. So this is like one of the ways that I would really recommend digitizing your logo, just doing simple shapes using the pen tool.